In this video, I'll be explaining Amazon S3 security. Hi, my name is Alex and I am a senior software engineer and AWS solutions architect. We'll cover access control in S3, including IAM policies, access control lists or ACLs, public access blocking, and we'll also have a hands-on lab. Controlling access in S3 involves several tools. IAM policies managed through AWS Identity and Access Management, or IAM, help control user permissions across all services, including S3. Bucket policies allow you to set permissions for who can access data at the bucket level. Access control lists, or ACLs, let you set specific permissions for individual objects or entire buckets. IAM policies can be attached to a user, group, or role, allowing them to interact with the bucket and its contents as specified. IAM policies consist of several elements. Version specifies the policy language version. Statement, a block of permissions for the user or role. SID, a unique identifier for the statement. Effect, determines whether actions are allowed or denied. In our case, effect is allow. Action lists the specific actions the user or resource is permitted to take. Resource specifies the bucket and its contents. Uh, the first Amazon resource name or ARN refers to the bucket itself because we have least bucket action. The second ARN with a slash and the star refers to all objects within the bucket for the actions like get, put, and delete. Bucket policies define who, users, roles, or AWS accounts has access to the bucket and what specific actions they can perform. Uh, for example, a bucket policy may allow users from the internet to access bucket files. Bucket policies use the same elements as IAM policies, with one key difference, the principle. In IAM policies, the principle, the user or role to which the policy applies, is implied. But in bucket policies, the principle must be specified. For example, using star as the principle means allowing access to anyone on the internet. Bucket policies can also be used to allow users or resources from one AWS account to access an S3 bucket in another account. For example, you can create a policy that grants an IAM user or EC2 instance from account A access to objects in an S3 bucket in account B. Access control lists, or ACLs, are an older method for controlling access to S3 buckets and objects. Although they are less flexible and powerful than IAM policies and bucket policies, ACLs can still be used to grant basic permissions at a granular level. However, ACLs are considered a legacy feature. It's important to note that public access granted through a bucket policy or ACL won't be effective unless public access blocking is disabled. The block public access settings prevent uh, accidental exposure of buckets or objects, ensuring they remain private unless explicitly configured for public access. Now that we've covered the theory behind Amazon S3 security, let's move on to a hands-on lab. Before we dive in, if you are enjoying this video, please like and subscribe to our channel to help more viewers discover this content. I am in AWS console. Let's start by going to S3 and clicking Create Bucket. For this example, we'll use the bucket name Alex Rusin Demo Bucket 1. Remember, the bucket name must be unique. We'll leave the default settings, ACL disabled, block public access enabled, versioning disabled and default encryption. Then we'll click Create Bucket. Now that the bucket is created, let's click on it and upload a file. After selecting the file and uploading it, we can close the upload window and click on the file. If we try to access the file using object URL, we'll see an access denied error because the bucket is not public yet. To make the bucket public, go back to the bucket Click on Permissions and under Block Public Access, 
click Edit, uncheck the options to allow public access and click Save Changes. You'll get a warning and you'll need to type Confirm to proceed. Now public access is enabled. Next, we'll update the bucket policy to allow public access. Click Edit under Bucket Policy. You can refer to policy examples. This page gives you a list of examples of the policies for frequently used use cases. It's a good reference. We can also use Policy Generator to create a policy. However, we're not going to do that. For simplicity, I'll paste an already prepared policy that allows anyone to access the objects in the bucket. Make sure the bucket ARN is correct and it has slash star at the end to refer to all objects in the bucket. The policy will allow only get object action, meaning users can view files but not modify them. After pasting the policy, click Save Changes. Now if we go back to the files, object URL will be able to access it publicly. Next, uh, we'll demonstrate making an object public using ACLs. First, go back to permissions and delete the bucket policy. Confirm by typing delete. Now the policy is removed and if you refresh the object URL, you'll uh, see access is denied. To make the object public with ACLs, go to access control under permissions. First, we need to enable ACLs by clicking Edit under Object Ownership, acknowledging the warning and saving changes. Once ACLs are uh, enabled, go to the object's permissions. Under ACLs, check the option to allow read access for everyone and then save the changes. Now, if you refresh the object URL again, the image will be accessible publicly. As mentioned, ACLs are an older mechanism for managing access. It's generally better to use bucket policies because uh, they offer more flexibility. If you want to learn more about bucket and object concepts in S3, please check out our video on AWS S3 Basics.